Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Foss, and HBO's The Last of Us Season 1 has come to an end, and now new reports have confirmed that Part 2 of the game will span multiple seasons. If you watch this season carefully, little Easter eggs and cameos were snuck in, setting up major parts of Season 2 that will surely circle back on and say, oh uh -huh, they did the thing! I'm gonna break down these overlooked details and everything Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin have teased about Season 2. I'm gonna touch on some stuff that comes up in Part 2 of the games, but I will precede any big reveals with uh, another spoiler warning, so if you're terrified to know anything about Part 2 of the game. Well, why the f did you click on this video? But since you're here, thank you, I will take care of you and I will give you just enough to get excited for the road ahead while properly marking any upcoming spoiler sinkholes. Hey, subscribe to our new channel, The Deep Dive. I got a deep dive on the original John Wick that you're gonna love coming on Friday. And if you're going to WonderCon this year, I'll be doing a panel with other new Rockstars hosts on Friday, March 24th at 2.30, room 213AB. Come hang out with us. And thank you to Harry's for sponsoring this video. More on them in a moment. Okay, Druckmann and Mazin confirmed in an interview with GQ that part two of the game would be adapted over multiple seasons, at least two, but they wouldn't confirm if it was more than that. In January, the series was renewed by HBO for a second season, so this is an update that there will be at least three seasons of The Last of Us on HBO. So without going too far into the plot of part two, an important character to part two of the game is Abby. The actress who plays Abby in the game, Laura Bailey, cameos in the season finale playing one of the nurses who aids the Firefly doctor, Dr. Anderson, in the surgery prep for the extraction of the cordyceps from Ellie's brain. She's the nurse with the darker sleeves, behind the bed closer to Ellie's head. We know this because Neil Druckmann shared on Instagram an image of Bailey posing in front of Dr. Anderson's body. Now, before she played Abby in part two, Laura Bailey actually played one of these nurses in part one of the game. So this is really Laura Bailey and the character coming full circle. Now, there is more to this that definitely spoils part two of the game. So skip to this time if you just want more general knowledge about where season two might go. Okay, so if you played part two of the game, you know that Abby is actually the daughter of Dr. Jerry Anderson and the doctor that Joel executes, and she never lets go of that grudge. We catch up with Abby early on in part two of the game. Joel saves her, she realizes who Joel is, and then beats him to death with a golf club right in front of Ellie. Now this happens early on, and it shocked the hell out of everyone, and you actually have to play as Abby at one point. It was a hugely controversial move, but it is true to what Neil Druckmann always wanted to do with The Last of Us games, to force game players into the shoes of these morally compromised characters. So in this photo, when Laura Bailey poses over the body of Dr. Anderson, Druckmann said Bailey said that she captioned it with Daddy. So when I look ahead to season two, I keep going back and forth on when they plan to put Joel's death in season two. Like if they were mapping part two of the game exactly on the second season, I would say early on, but if they're gonna be taking their time with multiple seasons of part two, as has been confirmed, facing out season two with like cutaways and flashbacks, I could see them squeezing out another full nine episodes out of Pedro Pascal to save his death for the finale. Okay, so that covers our, our big spoiler section. Welcome back. So Neil Druckmann said that when they tested out part one of the game, game testers all thought The Last of Us would play Play out like the Telltale game series, because this was an era of video games where the big trend was, let the player make the choice of where the story goes. Game testers of The Last of Us thought that they would be given the option to save Ellie or not in the hospital, and they were all surprised to find out that they were just forced to save Ellie and to live with that. Druckmann added that testers said, I can't believe you made me kill the doctor and those nurses, and Druckmann would say, whoa, 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 wait, you didn't have to kill the nurses too. You only have to kill the doctor with the scalpel to be able to grab Ellie. You can totally spare the nurses if you want, but many game players let the violence take over them and took out those nurses too. Dante torched the whole freaking room. Touch my girl, you won't get the chance. Now the show takes the somewhat kinder path by having Joel spare the nurses just to prove that point. But it also makes one major change here. In the game, there are two nurses, one of them played by Laura Bailey, as is the case here. But in the show, there is a mysterious third nurse hanging back in the shadows. Shaving is one of those things that I missed the opportunity to learn how to do properly because I was a hormonal teenager who was tired of having my dad explain things to me. As an adult, I'm grateful for anything that can take my lack of shaving skill and make up for it just by being a great razor, you know, like hair. Harry's. Harry's blades are super sharp, so I can finally get that close double freeze shave that I've heard so much about. And the handle is textured, so I have a good grip and I can get my angle just right, even when I'm doing that weird little area just at the corner of my jaw. The starter set came with a five blade razor cartridge designed by German engineers, a weighted handle, and shaving cream with aloe to keep my face soft, as well as a travel blade cover so I can toss my blade in my bag when I'm on the go. If you, like me, are somebody who spent their whole life feeling like they just didn't get shaving, you should get Harry's. Just click the link in the description box below to buy a Harry's trial set for just $5. The set is worth $13, but you're only paying $5. Again, click the link in the description box below to get your discounted trial set from Harry's today.
Why did they add a third nurse to this scene? I believe this nurse is Abby, scrubbed up to help with this operation. And I think that we're gonna flash back to this moment from Abby's point of view. Some viewers thought Abby was snuck in earlier to the hospital shootout, like when Joel shoots at those two fireflies at the nursing station. One firefly provides cover fire while another one rounds the corner and flees down the hall. Some viewers thought that they saw a ponytail bouncing off that runner, but no, this is a man that ponytail is really just a strap on his backpack. Still, ultimately, I think Abby was in this hospital. Season two will spend more time in the town of Jackson. Part two of the game starts there, and so all the episode six events in Jackson were inspired by those early sections of part two of the game. That includes that subtle moment when Ellie noticed that girl staring at her. What? What's wrong with you? Druckman and Mason confirmed this character might be Dina, someone in Ellie's world in part two of the games. We don't know if the character will be recast with a new actor in season two. Now, how is season two gonna be structured? Druckman and Mason in every interview have said that for season two, their process will be the same as it was for season one, to identify one thematic through line for the story and to find ways in every episode to address it, including shifting away from the main character's points of view to other world events. We saw that in season one with the 1960s talk show, The Mycologist and Jakarta, the Bill and Frank episode, Kathleen's community in Kansas City, David's community at the Lakeside Resort, Ellie's birth from Anna. One episode was mostly a flashback with Ellie and Riley adapting the Left Behind DLC. All in all, events from just part one of the game accounted for roughly just 60% of what we saw across those nine episodes. Mason confirmed this shifting around a point of view in the official HBO After Show podcast when he was asked about the second season. And we will also take advantage of the freedom we have in television that wasn't there in the game, specifically the advantage of changing perspective. So we will use what we can use in a new medium to tell that story. And Another promise they made for season two was to include more horror from the infected, because I think for some cynical viewers, they were tapping on their TV screen saying, now there are going to be zombies in this zombie show, right? It's not a zombie show, but you know, this is the genre of this kind of horror. I think people expected something similar to the gameplay. And in the gameplay, clickers, runners, bloaters are attacking the characters constantly. You don't really get a reprieve from them. Mason also said that they will be exploring more of that new world detail from the show of the Cordyceps Underground Network that Tess talked about in episode two. Actually, Anna actress Ellie from the games, Ashley Johnson, asked Mazin and Dreckman about this and listen how they respond knowingly as she asks it. There's something that, and I don't know if this will ever transfer over to the game from the show, hmm. but in watching the episodes and, and, and how the fungus is a little different mm. and how are you step on things mm. and it can attract mm. hundreds. Yes. And that I will say is something that I think we will be exploring further in the next season. I think this first time around, we were learning so much about how to create the infected and how to uh, televise them in a way that was exciting and didn't seem goofy or weird or artificial or, and I think we figured out that. And I think this next season, the interconnectivity of them and the risk of stepping on the wrong thing, that stuff is going to be brought forward more for sure. Druckmann has also indicated the underground network could be something woven into a part three of the games if that ever happens. And there has been a lot of speculation that Naughty Dog is secretly working on a part three and is waiting to announce. And that Naughty Dog's next big game, Druckmann interestingly is not directing, which could free up his schedule to be working on A Last of Us Part Three. I wanna know from you, how many seasons do you want The Last of Us to run for? Honestly, I'm good with just three seasons. And if there's a third part of the game, we can have future seasons down the road. But yeah, I don't need shows to run forever and ever and ever. Comment down below with your thoughts and another reminder to subscribe to our new channel, The Deep Dive, and support us by grabbing something from the Deep Dive collection at nerdriot.shop. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.